Kentucky's opponent would be the Razorbacks of Arkansas, 31 and 3. Kentucky was 28 and 2. However, in the first semifinal game, it would be Notre Dame, 23 and 6, against the Blue Devils of Duke, 26 and 6. In that first game, both teams got off to a relatively slow start. Oftentimes, Notre Dame tried to work the ball inside to Kelly Trapukin. And many times, Duke would come up with the basketball. The Irish hurried some of their shots, and combined with a cold 38% shooting from the floor, they quickly fell behind. Duke, meanwhile, used their fast break to perfection. The Blue Devils outscored the Irish 14-4 in the closing minutes, and not surprisingly, boasted a commanding 43-29 lead at halftime. As it turned out, the story of this game was the great comeback by Notre Dame. The Blue Devils knew it was going to be a tough struggle in the second half. They realized the Irish had to go all out, and that Notre Dame did do, hoping to catch Duke at the wire and perhaps even win it in overtime. They used their muscle under the boards as Bruce Flowers powers this one in. Moments later, the outside shooting of Duck Williams, a 16-footer drill. Williams then came down, knocked the ball loose, dashed down court. And it was here that the Irish trailed by only six points. Kelly Trapuca misses, but the ball goes out of bounds off the fingertips of Gene Banks of Duke. The Irish had possession, and they pulled to within four points, 84 to 80, on this heart-stopping shot by Duck Williams of Notre Dame. Moments later, the Irish got the ball back after two free throws by Duke, which made the score 86 to 80. Notre Dame kept the pressure on, patiently working the ball outside, looking for the good shot, and then it came. Tracy Jackson from the corner, and Duke's lead is cut to four points, less than a minute to go. But Jackson committed his fourth personal foul, sending Jim Sponarkel to the free throw line with a one-and-one -one situation. Sponarkel calmly made both shots, and Duke was ahead 88-82 to with 44 seconds to go. Seconds later, Duck Williams connects from his favorite spot on the floor. And immediately, Notre Dame calls timeout to set up a full-court press. Spanarco throws the ball in. He gets it back and dribbles up court. But for one of the few times in the tournament, he made a mistake. The ball is just off the mark, goes out of bounds off the fingertips of Gene Banks. Duke ahead, 88-84, to 84, less than 25 seconds to go, and Tracy Jackson gets the ball for Notre Dame. He stops, shoots, and it's good. The Irish now trail by only two points. Again, Notre Dame applies deep pressure, and it works. Stan Wilcox comes up with the ball. 13 seconds to go. The Irish give it to their hot hand, Doug Williams. He gets the shot away cleanly, but is just a tad short off the front rim, and it's recovered by John Harrell of Duke, who's immediately fouled, much to the displeasure of Coach Digger Phelps of Notre Dame, who had frantically been signaling for a timeout. Only nine ticks left on the clock. Harrell makes two free throws, and the game is over. Duke wins at 90 to 86, which provides an unforgettable moment for all the Duke fans and players. On to semifinal game number two, the Razorbacks of Arkansas against the Wildcats of Kentucky. Kentucky controlled the opening tip, and the Wildcats appeared to be off and running. But Arkansas had other ideas. The Razorbacks were one of the top defensive teams in the country, relying on the speed and quickness of players like number 10, Ron Brewer. He breaks up this Kentucky pass and winds up with an easy two points. In the opening five minutes, five different players scored for Arkansas. And the key to their success was once again defense. Again, Ron Brewer comes up with a big steal. And he stuffs the ball for two. As it turned out, Arkansas's aggressive defensive play got them into early foul trouble. Steve Shaw, the Razorback 6'11 center, already had four fouls with a little over 13 minutes to play in the first half. And his teammate, number 42, Jim Counts, another Arkansas big man, picked up his fourth foul with just under four minutes to go in the half. With their big men in foul trouble, Arkansas had to make some adjustments on defense. However, the Wildcats couldn't take advantage of that possible weakness and led at the half by only two points, thanks to this basket by veteran senior player James Lee. The score at halftime, 32 to 30. With the issue still in doubt and with 20 minutes of basketball yet to be played, both sides felt the championship was very much within their grasp. 
Coach Eddie Sutton of Arkansas kept stressing to his players to maintain their coolness, keep the pressure on the Wildcats, and work for the high percentage shots. Neither team was really able to take command in the second half. This Jack Givens rebound bucket put the Wildcats up by five, 16.32 to go. Arkansas never lost its poise. The Razorbacks kept chipping away, scoring on plays like this, a beautiful sweeping hook shot by Steve Shaw. And at the other end of the court, Kentucky continued its fine play. Jay Scheidler making a nifty pass to Mike Phillips, who scores from the baseline. As the game progressed, Arkansas at times had only one man on the floor taller than six feet four. The Razorbacks were kept away from the boards, and finally, with six minutes and 19 seconds to play in the game, a crucial moment came. They lost their big man. Number 30, Steve Shaw, accumulated his fifth personal foul and had to sit out the rest of the game. However, instead of folding, Arkansas regrouped and fought back. Sidney Moncrief's layup cut Kentucky's lead to four points. Kentucky scored, but Marvin Dell kept the Razorbacks close with this beauty. Moments later, Alan Zahn's rebound on a missed free throw cut the gap to one. The Wildcats got a couple of free throws. Arkansas got one. And then with 1.55 to go, Kentucky leading by four, came perhaps the most significant play of the game, as explained by Kyle Macy of Kentucky. It was something that we had called, and we, we'd used it before during the year. A lot of people said they'd never seen it before, but we had used it. But it, it was a big play. It kind of got our momentum back going and stopped theirs. It was a big play, all right, as Jack Gibbons made the easy layup. But there was still lots of time for Arkansas. Kentucky kept the defensive pressure on, did not allow the Razorbacks to work the ball inside. Eventually, Arkansas had to go from the corners. This shot missed by Dell, recovered by Kyle Macy after the try for the points. Macy controlled the ball from here on, doing what he does best, dribbling and keeping his opponent at bay. It's a, kind of a personal pride thing when you get the ball and they are pressing you. You want to show him that he can't stop you. And three seconds later, the game was over. Coach Joe Hall of Kentucky, shaking hands with Coach Eddie Sutton of Arkansas. The Kentucky Wildcats would now play in the championship game of the NCAA tournament for the seventh time. And once again, the final score, Kentucky 64, Arkansas 59.